We've talked a lot about who the Steelers should take in the first round, but day two picks are always essential to building a franchise. We'll talk about the top offensive and defensive picks the Steelers should consider in the day two of the NFL draft. I'm Chris Carter, joined by Tony Serino today for a Tony Tuesday. Let's get into it. You are Locked On Steelers, your daily Pittsburgh Steelers podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And welcome to the Locked On Steelers podcast. I'm your host, Chris Carter, bringing you your daily dose of all things of the Pittsburgh Steelers. As always, you can find us on Apple, Spotify, Google Podcasts, Odyssey, and YouTube. If you're watching this video on YouTube, hit the subscribe button to our YouTube channel. Hit the like button on this video if you enjoy it. And if you subscribe to this channel, you get all of our breaking news updates as well as our daily Monday through Friday episodes. If you want to help out the show even further, go on Apple Podcasts. Leave us a five-star review with a positive comment. You both at the same time. And you'll get a special shout-out at the end of the show. We thank you for making the Locked On Steelers podcast your first listen every day. Joining me on Tuesday, we got the alliteration back. Back, baby, we got the We're names back. back. It's time for a Tony today. What's up, Tony? What's happening? Excited to be here. Excited to talk about uh, some, uh, like you said, some day two prospects today. We spent so much time talking about will they, won't they take a quarterback? When, when will they trade up for Malik Willis? We're done with that for now. Happy to talk about some other things, uh, some other positions, perhaps. Right, and that's the whole point of this is that. The, the, there's, there's still there's a whole so much onus put on the first round pick and rightfully so we'll, we'll we'll talk about that a lot more we'll be predicting where they'll go and i'm sure there'll be a lot more speculation once they do sign a safety what all that'll do for their projections but it's important to look at day two options and, and see who best fits what the steelers will be trying to do predicting who might be there because then there's also the thing where some players we project to be there on day two who won't be on day two some players we project to be out on day two to be sitting right there for you so yep there's always surprises, but this is going to be more focused on guys that we reasonably believe have a good chance to be there when the Steelers pick at 52 Yeah, and would be a good fit for the team. So, you know, there's a lot of people out there who might say, what about this guy? What about that guy? And we're like, like Lewis seen, Lewis seen be a great day two pick if he's sitting there at 52. I just don't think there's a chance in any chance that he's going to be there, Yeah, uh, you know, sitting there that, that long. So Tony, let's start off with offensive players because okay. Okay, we're looking at this, this this team. They do need playmakers on offense. They do need to ha- a- add to the mix there. And quarterback can also technically be in pay- play here because you could go for a guy like a Carson Strong, like a Sam Howell, guys, Matt, Matt Coral, who, guys who you think might last to this part of the draft. I don't anticipate Malik Willis, Kenny Pickett, or uh, Desmond Ritter to be there, you know, at this stage. But there's also those options. So yeah. I'm going to open the floor to you first. Who's your first offensive player that you think the Steelers should consider on day two? Yeah, I'm not going to be talking about quarterbacks because, you know, like we've, I, I am just not a day two quarterback, you know, type. I, the Steelers don't need a backup right now. They need a starter. And if, you, if you're not willing to take that guy in the first round, then you probably don't believe enough in him that he's going to be a long-term starter for your team. So uh, for me, the first player that I'm thinking about right now on the offensive side is George Pickens, the wide receiver Ooh. from Georgia. Um, I, I Look, it's it's interesting because you, you talk about the wide receiver room in Pittsburgh right now. Obviously, there, there are big holes to fill, right? They lost Juju. They lost James Washington. They lost Ray Ray McLeod. So there are three guys out of the room, and they really haven't added anybody. Gunnar Olszewski, however you pronounce his, his last name, you know, more of a return man than he is uh, a wide receiver option probably in this offense. So they do need to fill it out. The thing I struggle with here, Chris, is, you know, trying to figure out the, the body type that they're looking for, right? They, they already have Deontay, who's kind of the separator, the route runner. You know, he's got some good run after catch. And then they've got Chase Claypool, who could be your kind of big body, speedy receiver. You know, he can he can moss you down the sideline. He hasn't shown a ton of that. What I like about Pickens is, look, I'm disappointed in Claypool right now, but mm-hmm. he, he he could fit maybe more of the, of the uh, Claypool mold. Now, he's not necessarily a – you know, a, a big body guy. He's 6'3", 195. So he doesn't necessarily have like the, you know, the Calvin Johnson body type where he's going to go up there and he, he's going to uh, beat you with his physicality. But he's got really good body control. He's a, he's a, he's athletic enough uh, coming off of that ACL. And this is a guy who, you know, he's one of these players and it's pr- kind of unique to this draft. The further back you go in his tape, the better off it is. He had this ACL injury, so we don't have, you know, we have this big gap in his tape. But, um, I mean, I, I love what I saw before the ACL injury, if, if, if the Steelers get him in a set in the second round, they're potentially getting a first round player who just happens to be coming off of this injury. And that's why he falls to the second round. 
No, I agree. It's a it's a legitimate pick there. And Mike Tomlin was noted. I mean, there was on, he was on camera being really really watching closely over Pickens in there. We know the Steelers like to pick those receivers in the second round. Uh, they did so with Juju Smith Schuster and James Washington and Chase Claypool. So it would not shock me if it, if either now there's an interesting debate there of if Pickens will be there in the yeah. second round because yeah. uh, our own Peter Bukowski he posted one of his own. Uh, he's locked on Packers. Uh, and uh, he posted his own mock draft, and in one of his mock drafts, uh, he had he he was picking pickings in the first round. So that that's a tough one. So I mean, it but is. but but if he's sitting there at fifty two, I think that's a, that that would be a heck of a get. Get my first pick that I'll have here. I'm also going to go wide receiver. I'm going to go Christian Watson. Okay. Notre Dame, not Notre Dame, North Dakota. I said I put that ND there, and I did it to myself. But uh, wide receiver tested extremely well. Ran a ran a sub four four forty yard dash. Goes up and gets the ball. Good route running. Needs to shore up his hands a little bit more. But he has all the measurable measurables to be a superstar wide receiver in this draft. He's another guy who some people feel is going to go earlier in the draft. I mean, some people saying he's going in the first round. I think him going to a small school and all the talent that is in this class give him a nice chance to be bumped down the list to be all the way down when the Steelers pick at at 52 and have a chance to get there. I wouldn't be surprised if he goes earlier, but I think a player like him with, I saw the route running that he did it. He was, he was shown at the senior bowl, all the things that he's been growing, growing into. I really think that he would be a heck of an addition to this young receiver group. And I, like you said, they need another young playmaker, a, a yeah. vertical, a vertical threat. And if they don't get that in the first round with a Chris Olave or a Jamison, Jamison Williams, I, I think finding that guy in the second round should be of prime importance. Do, do you think that – so, yeah, I, I agree with you on that, but do you think that's how Colbert and Tomlin are addressing this? Because, you know, it is an interesting room right now with Deontay going into a contract – or isn't a contract here now. He's, he's uh, There's talk of him potentially getting re-signed, but, you know, the, the, the price for wide receiver just keeps going, going up and up. So it'll be interesting to see if they can get that deal done. But if they don't, then, you know, you're looking at a room where – is it just kind of best play, best wide receiver available? Because hey, we don't know what this room is going to look like a year from now. Or like you said, do they need to kind of hone in on? Look, I like Sky Moore, I like David Bell, I like Khalil Shakir, but they need a guy who fits a certain type. Like you said, more of a speedster, more of a big play type of player down the field. Uh, that's a good question, Tony. Because I really, I really see this more as a they need I, the Steelers are always a best player available guy. Like if if there's a guy who looks like he's a future number one receiver, but he doesn't have that deep ball threat ability, and he's sitting and he's sitting there, I think that they'll they'll go for that guy for sure. But yeah. it, it, they also, I know, I know that they also they want big splash players because. When you have a, a young quarterback like Mitch Trubisky, who's not going to be, who's not going to read the field, who's not going to be in an offense that he's been working in for the past 15 years, like Ben Roethlisberger was, you're going to, you're going to have times where you need big plays to erase the need for long, extended drives with several consecutive dis good decisions to be made. And having a guy who can take the top off a of defense, that to me can be something that helps ease those pains so that you're hitting more some more of those shot plays. And that's where you start to put in guys that could, hey, can you go up and win a jump ball? Can you get behind a cornerback and, and and win a jump ball with a safety? That those are some of the guys I think the Steelers should be should be looking at in the yeah. long in, in, in long run here at the wide receiver position. We're each going to give another offensive player and then we're going to give two defensive players that we both think the Steelers should be looking at on day two the NFL draft. We'll do that in just a sec. But first I want to talk to you guys about bet on Online. BetOnline.net is your number one source for all your betting stats sport, and sports information because when you go to BetOnline, you're going to find out all the latest sports developments, all the league reviews, and all the news, including all the things you need to get ready for the NBA playoffs and the NHL playoffs and the start of Major League Baseball's season. All of that's exciting and happening right now this April. Get in on the action at BetOnline.net. Bet online, bet online is your continued source for all your sports wagering information from live betting to playoffs, esports, and more. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more about all the trends and the action at Bet Online, where the game starts. Back here on the Locked On Steelers podcast, I'm your host, Chris Carter, here with Tony Serino for a Tony Tuesday. We're talking about day two options that the Steelers should be taking. We each are taking two offense and two defense. We both listed our first offensive players. Tony went wide receiver. Yep. And went and got George Pickens out of Georgia. Yep. I also went wide receiver. I went and got Christian Watson out of wide receiver out of Notre Dame. But, Tony, your second pick, you went well. with another playmaker. 
but one I think is going to cause a little bit of stir in the Steelers community. That's right. I like, you know me, I like to cause a little bit of trouble here on Lockdown Steelers. I love to rile up the fans. And so let's do that. Let's take a, should we take an inside, should we take an interior offensive lineman? You know, to, to, should we maybe take a tackle long term, you know, shore up that position? Nah. <laughs> Let's go running back. How do you feel about Whoa. that? Whoa. Yeah, running back in the first round last year, running back in the – Let's say third. I'll, you know, maybe not second, but let's go third round. Third round Ooh. running back this year. Give, look, look, I like Najee Harris a lot of a lot. But Najee Harris can't keep carrying the ball like he did last year. Or, you know, he will not be making it to a second contract in Pittsburgh. Very much a, a Le'Veon type scenario. Yeah. Uh, where, you know, as Mike Tomlin likes to say, the wheels fall off. So give me James Cook. James Cook, the br brother of Dalvin Cook, the running back out of Georgia. I'm going two Georgia players here. Turns out uh, Georgia Bulldogs. Pretty good. Pretty good at college football and pretty good at recruiting good players. What I like about Cook, not just the not just the bloodline thing. We know the Steelers like, you know, they, they have traditionally liked the bloodline thing. But uh, I think that he's he's kind of the big play type player. And, and not, not saying Najee Harris isn't a big play type player, but it, it was interesting a couple years ago. You know, after the Steelers took James Conner, they took Benny Snell. They then went with Anthony McFarland, who was, who was a very different type of back than the Steelers had been drawn to in years past. James Cook, not necessarily a... McFarland type and that I don't think he's he's small but he is he is certainly a playmaker um he doesn't have a lot of tread on the tires either I think he I think he I don't even know if he has 200 carries maybe 250 carries something like that yeah in his entire college career um so I like that about him you know you put him in a back where he can split time with Najee we all like Najee Harris I want to see Najee Harris have a long successful career in Pittsburgh but 300 350 400 touches a year for Najee so, Harris is going to gonna make, make it a, shorter it's gonna make a very short shelf life for him this is still a team that's you know kind of figuring out what the next phase of, of Steeler football looks like. So I like to see Najee there for a while. Let's get him a, let's get him a, a backup that he can trust. The Steelers can trust. That's why I like James Cook. Interesting pick there of James Cook. I'm going on the offensive line. I'm going to yeah. go get Nicholas petit Ferrer Now I did a mock draft Monday uh, uh, where our guy Garrett, he picked Nicholas petit Ferrer in his, in his third round. I think that would be a nice sweet spot to find a new offensive tackle, a guy that can say, hey, I'm coming in to learn behind Chooks Okorafor, for behind Dan Moore Jr. Because you're not settled on both of these guys as the locked in future guys. They're right now the guys you're locked into. But right. you need some competition. You need some fresh blood. And there's no guarantee of what's going to happen at uh at offensive tackle this year so uh petit frere a physical dude can be on the can, can be your right to i i like i like trying to put him at right tackle to see if he can get a good get a little bit more physical set yeah. the tone in the run game for the future but you can say hey buddy you're here to you're here to learn the tackle position swing tackle baby learn both you know and and, and see what you get out of him they also need depth at the tackle position so that they're not just starting everybody at you know at, you know you're pulling guys off the practice squad Depth is so important in today's game, and they they have not had that at offensive tackle, especially when they were dealing with injuries from guys like Zach Banner. Yeah, no, I I like this pick. I like taking a tackle here. It might seem a little weird because you know everybody talks about Dan Moore as look, Dan Moore is going to be the starter at left tackle. But you know Tomlin, it, it was interesting to me in the way that they've constructed this roster so far that they didn't at least bring in just a little competition for him. Look, I think Dan Moore is going to be a fine player, and I think he did enough last year that he should be penciled in as the starter. But Tomlin loves to do the two dogs, one bone thing, right? I mean, he, he does. That, that he is his thing does. when it comes to training camp. And he's, he's, he's certainly designed the interior of this offensive line to be that way, right? I think James Daniels is going to start. But the other two spots between Kevin Dotson, Kendrick Green, and, and Mason Cole, right? That's kind of a three dogs, two bone situation, <laughs> right? It's still, though, a competition where someone's going to get left out as far as the starting spots there. He hasn't designed it that way at left tackle. And so I, I like this here. It might seem a little early to take a tackle, but you know, this, like you talked about, the swing tackle is a uh, is certainly a uh, a need, and uh, you need some competition there at left tackle. Joe Haig is not that guy. Yeah, Haig's a guy that's there to be a, a, a you know a, a a guy that comes in in an emergency. You want a guy who can eventually you know push a starter um, in case the core of it doesn't work out. That's why I went Petit Frere there. All right, let's give our first defensive picks, and then we'll throw to another break. First sure. defensive pick. Who you got? I got Roger McCreary, the cornerback out of Ooh, Auburn. Uh, okay. You know, we, we've talked about on this podcast taking a corner in the first round. I think we're both on board with that because of that top end of this corner class is really yeah. good. It falls off for me really far. Um, and and look, McCreary would not come in and be any sort of competition to guys like Akilah Witherspoon or uh, you know Cam Sutton when it comes to the outside corner position. This is going to be a player who, who would come in and he would be strictly a slot corner. Mm -hmm. But 
uh, I like I, I like him. I, I like the way that he plays. You know, he he's got a very phys, a, a very physical uh, nature to him. Yeah, he's he. The problem for him, really, and the re- the reason why I think he won't be a first round pick is all the measurable stuff. You know, the wingspan, the size, all of that's going to yeah. you know, make him fall down boards. But I think you watch the tape and you see a player who's sticky in coverage, um, who, who's who you know has the right mentality at the position, um, and I think would be a, a, a real good asset to this team at, at you know specifically as a slot corner on this defense. Yeah, that that's something that'll be interesting here is that if the Steelers can get a slot corner type who can be a playmaker at that position. Um, you know, and that would, that allow you to say, Hey, you know what? Cam Sutton and Levi Wallace and Akella Witherspoon, you're all outside. And, right. you know, Arthur Mollett can be the second option in the slot. And then you're kind of solidifying your depth there. So that's an interesting pick there. And yeah. I do think that they need a playmaker at the cornerback position to come out of this draft, whether it's a guy who's going to be a future CB two or a future CB one. But I do think this would be a heck of a draft to go get it. Cause there's some really good athletes. Like I've said before, I like my man, Damari Mathis out of pit as a, as a, I think he's boosting his day three uh, draft stock because he's definitely a day three guy still. But I'm, st- I, I think he would be a heck of addition there. My first defensive guy is a defensive guy. I'm not a hundred percent sure he's going to be there because I, I, there's people that that that, are, that see his talent and saw him at the Senior Bowl. But I got to go with Travis Jones, defensive tackle out of UConn. Oh, yeah. He he he's he he's tough. He's physical. He knows how to use his hands. He seems like he's already well trained with that. He's young. You're gonna be able to plug him in and play right away. I think he would be a nice guy to have to be a torchbearer to be you know developed behind Cam Hayward and Stephon to it. Hopefully, to Stephon to it will be will be ready to go this year. And then you can see him be him, him being the guy that kind of learns under them. And by the time Hayward's ready to retire or to it's getting another co- contract extension or figuring things out, and he's on the back end of his career, Travis Jones is gonna be that guy who's physical up front. Now, Grant again, Grant there's. There's not, you know, there's no guarantee that he's going to be there at 52 because I think a lot of people are feeling Travis Jones. But if there's not a Travis Jones, I'd also say the Marvin Leal uh, out of Texas A&M. I think he'd be an interesting pick. Also, Perry on Winfrey. There's a few yeah. defensive tackles guys, and I do think that if they don't get a Jordan Davis in the first round, they should go after one of those guys in the second round. I like, I like the pick of Jones particularly because he can play nose. Yes. and I know that they they signed Mar- Montrevious Adams back, so he's still going to be on this roster along with you know Alu Alu being healthy. But long term at that position, I mean, look, Alu Alu is 35. 35. He's, he's, yeah. he's gone after another year or two. Yeah. So it, it, it does feel to me like, you know, in the long term, maybe, look, maybe they just like Montrevious Adams and they, and they don't feel the need in the second round to address this position. But like you said, I think Jones is, you know, can also play end um, or, or at least, you know, he can play on the inside on, a, on passing down. So, um, yeah, I, I like that pick. Absolutely. I'm glad that you do. We got one more defensive pick each to go between us. We're going to get to that in just a second here. But first, we got to talk to you guys about rockauto.com. Save time and money when you visit rockauto.com. Watch you spend 30%, 50%, or even 100% more for the same parts from a chain store or car dealership. For example, if you go to if you go to rockauto.com, uh, you're going to see that that a Honda Odyssey fuel, fuel pump is $216. That's going to save you from what could be $353 at a chain store. That's a lot of money that you're saving just by staying at home, going on a website, and clicking on the car part that you need. Rock Auto is a family-owned business serving do-it-yourselfers for over 20 years. Rock Auto's prices are reliable over every customer, and they have everything you could need from brake parts to tail lamps to motor oil and even new carpet. Go explore their easy-to-use website today to find the solution for your auto part needs. And when you go to rockauto.com, right, go right now. Now, you'll see all the parts available for your car or truck. When you visit there, use please write in there in there. How did you hear us bar, bar, about us box locked on? Because when you put that there, they'll know that we sent you amazing selection, reliable low prices, all the parts your car will ever need. Visit rockauto.com today. Back here on the Locked On Steelers podcast, I'm Chris Carter. He's Tony Serino. We're finishing up our day two options talk because the Steelers could use a lot of different positions to address here. Now, yeah. you and I have both gone wide receiver. Mm-hmm. You've gone running back. I've gone offensive tackle. Um, you went cornerback, and I went defensive tackle. So now, with your final day two option that the Steelers should consider, and this isn't saying that they shouldn't consider other people, sure. who's, who's another day two guy that you think that the Steelers should really take a hard look at to add to their ranks? This is this is a guy I've liked since the beginning of the process. I think I've talked about him before on the show, but it, it, it got a little weird once they once they got um Miles Jack in the building. Linebacker becomes a, a weird spot to take, you know. It does. 
that, that room is kind of filled up now. If you take someone at this point, what happens to someone like Buddy Johnson, right? It's like, mm -hmm. where does he kind of fit? If you're, especially if you're going to have a second or third round pick come into that room, even though, look, I think that they're not going to pick up the fifth year option on Devin Bush. And so, you know, you, Kind of waiting in the wings there. I like Quay Walker. Let's just get out of it. I like Quay Walker. The <laughs> yeah, stop, stop the sell. Yeah, sell I know, I know. Listen, now, you might be saying to yourself, Tony, you've just taken three Georgia players and an Auburn player, all SEC guys. And yeah, you know, I like that. Look, I like the small school kids. You know, I like the real, you know, the uh, the guys who have to really work for now. Uh, look, this is a look, I, the George, you, you can't go wrong picking Georgia players in this draft. You can't go wrong specifically picking Georgia defenders in this draft. I like Quay Walker because. Uh, you know, we talk a lot about Devin Bush and the struggles that he's had. And I, I it's I always laugh when I hear people talk about Devin Bush and they say, oh, you know, as soon as, a, as soon as an offensive lineman gets their hands on on Devin Bush, he's done. It's like, OK, I mean, the kid is he's he's 5'11", like 220. OK, a 5'11", mm -hmm. 220 player. Yeah. I mean, when a 300 pound offensive lineman gets their hands on him, it's it's not going to be it's, it's not going to be great. You want what you what you want. Is for that player to be in 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 clear air and being able to make plays on the ball without having to go through a guard to get there. Quay Walker could be that kind of player. I think you'll line up alongside a Devin Bush to kind of you know in a Vince Williams type to kind of clear it up for him. Quay Walker is 6'4", 240. He runs a four five. He's not ridiculous length. Yes, yes, and he is he's, he's not a slow player. Look, he's, obviously he's not the four three of Devin Bush. He runs a four five though. I mean this is not he's not a slow player by any stretch. I like I like his instincts. I like his ability. To, to consistently be around the football. Um, and I think, again, this is someone who I would hope would be there in, in round three, but maybe I can get him in round two. But again, it's, it's a player who maybe not going to be the, the, you know, every down like super playmaker in the middle of your defense, but he's going to provide a, a, another uh, player on the inside. That's going to help your, your kind of stars, you know, stay upright and, and make the plays. I certainly think that's an option there. Um, I, I like his length. I like his athletic ability. Yeah. Um, you know, this this is a guy who ran a nine six three in, in the in the uh, or excuse me, a four five two, not nine six three. Jesus. I'm looking, I'm reading the raw scores. Um he ran a four five two in the forty uh in the forty yard dash. Um yeah. he, he had a he had a uh I think he had, he had a, uh, ten feet on on his broad jump, or not ten feet, he a hundred inches on his broad jump, uh ran a four point three two shuttle, a six point eight nine. Uh, three cone, all very good times there. His vertical jump had something to be desired, but yeah, you, you, who needs who needs vertical as much at the linebacker position? Uh, you want guys that are going to be filled because again, what the Steelers are looking for here is a a, a a contrarian or a guy that's going to be opposite of Devin Bush and Miles Jack because Miles Jack is very much the similar guy. Now he's right. better; he seems to be better at engaging blockers than than Devin Bush, but they need a guy who's going to be physical, who can be the buck linebacker, and that's what they got. So I also went this direction. I but I went with a guy who I think a lot of people like if you've been studying this draft class. Mm -hmm. I'm going with Leo Chenal, oh, Wisconsin yeah. linebacker. And the reason I was pulling up the raw scores, raw scores uh, now if you don't know what that means, it's the relative athletic score. Um, Kenny Platt is a guy who puts together fa fascinating numbers over the years. It compares positions, you know, how a guy does in the combine in their pro days and puts their 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 metrics, their 40s, their jumps, their all their weights, their heights, and compares it to the position over the past like 20 years. And then in the score gives you like the rating. If they the closer to 10.0, the the like the more impressive they were. And uh, Leo Chen Chenal scored a 9.99, which means he is like almost the perfect d d you know, metrics for a linebacker in the NFL or, or as, as, as high as well as they scored. Now, Quay Walker also way up there at a 9.63. Let's compare them both to the uh, to, to the guy who's considered the overall top linebacker of this class. Devin Lloyd scored a 9.58. All, and then all of these are elite scores. These are like right. really, really good. Like if you get one of these guys, you're like, yeah, I like that dude. But yeah. what I like about Leo Chanel, 4.53 in, in, in the 40-yard dash, uh, really explosive, has a really good vertical at 40.5. Hundred, uh, you know, over a hundred inches in, in in the in the in the broad does really well there. Four point two four in the in in the shuttle, six point nine eight in in the three cone. He's agile, he's explosive, and he's physical. And when you watch his tape, you see the willingness in him to take on the run. You see him getting up in people's faces. He's not scared to do that, and he's also willing to do that while conducting and being a leader. And he helps out in the passing game. And this is my whole thing here. And I I feel you about Buddy Johnson. You just drafted the guy in the fourth round, and you hope that he can become something. But you cannot let yourself get tied up about a fourth-round pick 
if a day two option is there and you're sitting there in the second or third rounds and you're saying, man, that's an extremely good athletic linebacker yeah, who can add to our ranks. And you know what? If Buddy Johnson works out, great. Buddy Johnson works out. But Leo Janal would give you the option, and we talked about this before, if Miles Jacks works out and uh, and Devin Bush doesn't, you can have your number two line to, uh, you know, line to replace him. If the vice versa works out, if Devin Bush works out and Miles Jack doesn't, and Leo Chanel gives you another shot to be the guy that you pair with him. If neither of those top guys work out and Leo Chanel ends up becoming your guy, you've taken a shot there. And yeah. I really like his athleticism. I, you know, the things that I've read about him being a leader at Wisconsin, also the things that I've seen about him, about his, about on, on tape, just the way that he plays the game. I think that'd be a presence that they're, they would more than welcome on the Steelers defense in the coming years. I, I think you can, yeah, I, I'm with you on, you know, you, you shouldn't, you certainly shouldn't pass up linebacker this year because you're like, well, I don't know how he fits into the room, right? You know, it's it's different from wide receiver because you, you they definitely need one. It just, you know, there is kind of this uh, ripple effect of if they, they take a linebacker now, then that does mean that they're going to, they're going to make, they're going to have a hard cut to make potentially that, you know, that, that hard cut to make could be Robert Spillane. Um, but then they, you know, it gets into this thing of who's going to, Who's going to back up Devin Bush and, and Miles Jack, right? Let's say yeah. one of those guys has to miss extended time. Feels Spillane like would probably be because because of his experience, he would be the de facto answer. Right. I mean, this is a team that that wants to have not a not a good defense, not a great defense, an elite defense yeah. this year. And so the more rookies you're putting on the field, yeah, the, the harder time you're going to have being a truly elite defense just because of the the mistakes that you know that they're going to make as as young players. Um, so I think I look, I think I think Chanel, I think Quay Walker, I think both those guys. Could certainly start in 2022 if you in a pinch if you needed them to, but I, I think they're probably better off, like you said, you know, when once once this team gets clarity on Miles Jack and Devin Bush and and how they want to proceed with those players, not just for this year but for years going forward, Walker Chanel, I think fit fill in next to one of those players. I, I agree. I think it, it, and it, again the antithesis of the smaller, quicker linebacker, the yep. bigger but also quick linebacker it would would be it would be a solid addition. And there's quite a few, and that's the thing: Quay Walker and Leo Chanel aren't the only ones. Chad Muma out of Wyoming. Yeah, a, it's a great class. This this is a really good class to get one of those guys in the day two. So so again, you know, we're talking about these guys. We're not locking and say, oh, if they don't get this this guy, they stink. You know, Christian Harris, I think another guy who would who would fit well there. Brian Asamo, and now granted he's smaller. But, you know, I talked to Mark Caboli. He was like, you don't play small. You watch him at the Senior Bowl and how he was practicing. He was going up against the biggest and the baddest. Channing Tindall, a guy that Arthur Motes on this show has, has pointed out, another Georgia guy, yeah. crazy enough. Um, there's Three there's linebackers of, from Georgia are going to be probably day one or day two of players. They, it, it, they'll be gone before the fourth round begins. Yes. I'll put it that way. They're, they're, they're yeah. going to be gone. But then there's also Darian Beavers out of Cincinnati, another 6'4", 250 type linebacker. There's plenty of guys who have experience, who are who, are, who have been leaders, who have length and size and play the run, who you can add late day two or, you know, day two any time and maybe even early day three. You probably have to trade and get up some of those guys. But I do think that they should take a look at linebacker because that's going to be an important position for this team moving forward. As you said, they want to keep the elite defense going. Now, Tony, before we go, I, I want to point this out. I don't want to because I want to I want to be responsible here. Uh, we intentionally. You know, we talked. I talked a lot about Dwayne Haskins th yesterday and over the weekend, and I didn't want to. Um, I, I did. I didn't want to keep rehashing it on this show, yeah. but I yeah. do think it's 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 still it's still responsible to to talk about how that's still an impacting thing that 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 people are still talking about. Sure. Former pl former players, current players are all still talking about the impact that it has and and, and how it's making us think about think about things. I just wanted to give you a chance, uh, Tony, to just kind of discuss you know, what went through your mind when you heard it and what yeah. has been your biggest takeaway from how people have responded to the situation? It's, 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 it was absolutely shy. I could not, uh, it was, my mom texted me of all people, you know, she wanted to know if it was real. Cause uh, you know, to her, same thing, right. It's like, this can't, this kid is 24 yeah. years old and he's, you know, he's out there training with his teammates and um, yeah, it's, it's a, it's an absolute tragedy. Um, as far as, you know, as far as the, you talk about the, you know, kind of what, what have I learned about the way people have reacted to this? I think it's an unfortunate part of, of kind of modern society that we, you know, we, we do like the whole, it's this is such a tragedy, but man, what does this do to the Steelers quarterback room? You know, I, I that part of it. That's why is, I'm not even touching that. Like people, yeah. people are asking me, but so does this mean that they are drafting a quarterback? Like, man, I ain't trying to talk about that right now. Yeah, that, 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 that it really has, it's, you know, 
that is going to enter into the conversation. That's, but like, you know, this is where I mean, we're not even it's 48 hours from removed from this. It's yeah. Um, yeah. Th- look, th- this kid was 24 years old. He had his he had his whole life, his whole life ahead of him. Um, and the other thing I don't like is, is, you know, putting his passing in the context of who was having and all of that. I, I just I don't like that. And again, the, the, the thing to me. Is that he was? I mean, he was just getting started in life, and and now, yeah. you know, he he passed away. To me, that that is the tragedy here. You know, the the hole he's working with, you know, he's or he was, you know, trying to better himself and all that. I mean, I, I'm, you know, obviously that that was awesome to see, and and you know, he he is kind of trying to resurrect his career. But would it have been any less a tragedy if he if he wasn't? You know, what I mean, he's, he's yeah. twenty four. So that's, that's exactly. Uh, so, yeah. Thank you for your thoughts there, Tony. Yeah. I know it's a touching, it's a, it, it, it is a difficult thing to talk about because death is a difficult thing to talk about, but yeah. we'll do that here on the Lockdown Steelers podcast when we have to, and it's about that. So thanks again, Tony, for your time there. Uh, and thank you overall for just talking about this. You 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 are a joy to have on the show, my friend. Um, let people can find you, follow you, and get more of your work. Yeah, you can follow me on Twitter at Steeler Country, and you can find me on YouTube. It's a it's a YouTube show called AFC North Talk. It's a roundtable show all about the AFC North. Uh, we're going to be doing another draft preview this week, and then we're actually going to be doing a live stream during the draft. So if you want to come by, check us out there. Uh, get some uh, interesting perspective there on the NFL draft um, from you know all four of us. There, we'll be we'll be talking about the first round of the NFL draft. Absolutely. Do check out Tony. They do great work over there and they're a funny and entertaining bunch. You can watch uh, Tony give it to the other AFC North hosts uh, there because they're, they're, they're a fun group to, to listen to and watch. So do check them out. Thank you again, Tony, for joining the show. I'm Chris Carter, the host of the Locked On Steelers podcast. Again, you can find the show on YouTube, Apple, Spotify, Google Podcasts, Odyssey. Like this video if you saw it on YouTube and you enjoyed it. Hit the subscribe button to our YouTube channel to get all of our daily updates as well as our breaking news updates. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Carter Critiques. And if you want to help out the show, give us a five-star review on Apple Podcast. Combine that with a positive comment and you get a special shout at the end of the show. Like this person, we have text Texan by Grace who leaves a five-star review. It says, wave that towel, saying, love the show. Great information and hosts always work well together. As a Steelers fan in Texas, it's, it's hard to get good Steelers news, but this podcast keeps me informed and up to date. Keep it up and God bless. God bless you, Texan by Grace. Thank you very much for your five-star review. Always appreciate that. If you want your shout out, give us a five-star review with a positive comment as soon as it pops up. Sometimes it takes a couple days for it to pop up on my end, but when it does, I will get you on the show. Thanks again for posting all, for that review. Thanks again for checking us out. We're back in your ears and on your screens tomorrow with Wes Euler of Steeler Nation Radio. He'll be back for a West Wednesday talking all things on your Pittsburgh Steelers. 